Well, the city took issue with our numbers yesterday because some of those that we included in our analysis are union members, which means that union agreements limit who the city can and cannot hire. The city was right. We should have excluded them. So we used the city's new guidelines and we recrunched the data. The numbers did not change much. When we applied the city's parameters to the database, it still showed that in April of 2022, 70% of the $100,000 plus jobs were held by white people versus 20% held by black people. And when we applied the rules to today's numbers, the gap widens 72% white versus 20% black. And just looking at the people who have been hired or promoted since we did our initial story, the numbers are not much better. 69% of the $100,000 plus jobs went to white applicants, 25% went to black applicants. We spoke to the city's HR department about the disparity. They point out the recent black hires at City Hall. Some of our highest paid positions um, that we've made recent hires for our assistant city manager, our assistant to the city manager, um, our fire chief. We have um, done targeted recruitment and specifically, you know, posted uh, the jobs in like a di you know, diverse array of places, um, worked with hiring firms um, and stressed that that is, you know, is something that is important to us. And the deputy director of human resources points out union contracts limit the city's discretion on hiring, often forcing it to hire people who widen the pay gap. Still, she says, HR is doing everything it can. The HR department has recently partnered with uh, our Office of uh, Data and Performance Analytics to really dive into the hiring process even further than we have to figure out where there could be potential stumbling blocks and brainstorm how we can change those uh, for the future. And the city recently promoted Jude Johnson to open pathways to recruit minorities for all positions, including the higher paid ones. Up until the point that you were hired, had we not been doing this kind of thing? No, not to the fullest. We have never had a full-time or a person designated to do recruiting. Uh, that's why I was brought in. Johnson says the biggest issue is competition. We're up against the Procter & Gamble's, the GE's, the Kroger's, and everyone else. Yeah. All the other municipalities. Uh, and the rest of the municipalities. The president and CEO of the National Employment Law Project says Cincinnati may want to try a focus group of recruits to see where it can improve its efforts. There may be other things that they find either unwelcoming or constraining or whatever about the jobs that are on offer. So like really trying to get underneath, like what are the root causes for why the recruiting hasn't been successful? Rebecca Dixon says it may simply take more work to find more qualified candidates. If you've done a search and you have, say, no candidates of color in your pool, maybe you want to keep the job posting open a little longer and try longer. It sounds like you're saying, go back and try harder. Yes. Yes, that's what I'm saying. Now, one bright spot here, the CEO of the National Employment Law Project says that black managers are more likely to hire black employees. So with the latest African-American hires at the tops of the city departments that HR had just mentioned, perhaps the pay gap will begin to narrow. Kyle. All right, David, thank you so much. And just you can always find our local 12 stories right here on YouTube. Don't forget to tap subscribe and then you can get all the notifications.